a schoolgirl's diary for from I am Malala part 1 paragraphs 1 through 24 dedication to those children all over the world who have no access to education to those teachers who bravely continue teaching and to anyone who has fought for their basic human rights and education. Prologue. It was the most ordinary of days. I was 15 in grade nine, and I stayed up far too late the night before studying for an exam. I'd already heard the rooster crow at the dawn, but had fallen back to sleep. I'd heard the morning call to prayer from the mosque near but managed to hide under my quilt. And I pretended not to hear my father come to wake me. Then my mother came in and gently shook my shoulder. Wake up, Pisha, she said, calling me kitten in Pasto, the language of the Houston people. It's 7.30 and you're late for school. I had an exam on Pakistani studies. So I said a quick prayer to God. If it was your will, may I please come in first? I whispered, oh, and thank you for all the success so far. I gulped down a bit of fried eggs and chapati with my tea. My youngest brother, Atla, was in an exceptionally cheeky mood that morning. He was complaining about all the attention I'd received from speaking out about girls getting the same education as boys. And my father teased him a little at breakfast table. When Mala is prime minister, someday you can be her secretary, he said. Atla, the little clown in my family, pretended to be crossed. No, he cried, she will be my secretary. All this banter nearly made me late, and I raced out the door, my half-eaten breakfast still on the table, and I ran down the lane just in time to see the school bus crammed with other girls on the way to school. I jumped in that Tuesday morning and never looked back at my home. The ride to school was quick, just five minutes up the road and along the river. I ran on time, and my exam day passed as it always did. The chaos of Mongrove City surrounded us with its honking horns and factory noises while we worked silently, bent over our papers in hushed concentration. By day's end, I was tired but happy. I knew I'd be well on my I knew I had done well on my test. Let's stay for the second trip, said Manba, my best friend. That way we can chat a little longer. We always like to stay on for the late pickup. When our bus was called, we ran down the steps as usual. Manba and the other girls covered their faces, covered their heads and faces before we stepped outside the gate and got into the waiting Donna. The tr white truck that was our Kushla bus, school bus. And as usual, our driver was ready with a magic trick to amuse us. That day, he made a pebble disappear. No matter how hard we tried, we couldn't figure out his secret. We piled inside 20 girls and two teachers crammed into the three rows of benches, stretching down the length of the Dana. It was hot and sticky and there were no windows just a yellow plastic sheet that flapped against the side as we bounced along mongrove's crowded rush hour streets hijab baba road was a jumble of brick, brightly colored rickshaws women in flowing robes men on scooters honking and zigzagging through the traffic. We passed a shopkeeper's butchering chickens, a boy selling ice cream cones, a billboard of Dr. Humana's Hair Transplant Institute, 
Mambra and I were deep in conversation. I had many friends, but she was the friend of my heart, the one with whom I shared everything. The day when we were talking about who would get the highest marks this term, one of the other girls started a song and the rest of us joined in. Just after passing the Little Giants snack factory and the bend in the road, not more than three minutes from my house, the van slowed to a halt. It was oddly quiet outside. It's so calm today, I said to Manba. Where are all the people? I don't remember anything after that, but here's the story that was told to me. Two young men in white robes stepped in front of our truck. Is this the Kasha school bus? One of them asked. The driver laughed. The name of the school was painted in black letters on the side. The other young man jumped onto the tailboard and leaned into the back where we were all sitting. Who is Mala? He asked. No one said a word, but a few girls looked in my direction. He raised his arms and pointed at me. Some of the girls screamed. I squeezed Mamba's hands. Who is Mala? I am Mala, and this is my story. <laughs>